The deal is now officially done and Bethesda is now a part of Microsoft. And Phil Spencer has commented on the acquisition with some interesting comments before the alleged event on March 11th. And a new Nintendo Switch Pro rumor has Nvidia ceasing production on the Tegra X1 chip used in the current Nintendo Switch that is starting to game Steam online and well I have a lot of things to say about that. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to like the video. But without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games. So yesterday on the channel, we pretty much confirmed that the Microsoft and Bethesda acquisition. So yesterday on the channel, we pretty much confirmed that Bethesda and Microsoft. So yesterday on the channel, we of course talked about the Microsoft acquiring Bethesda purchase, the $7.5 billion purchase that was pretty much a done deal, and this morning it now was confirmed to be officially a done deal. Microsoft now owns Bethesda and all of the properties that Bethesda has, of course all of their subsidiary studios, anything falling under the Bethesda family is now a part of the Microsoft family. Now there's still a lot of questions that go into it with this situation because like we said in yesterday's video, Bethesda is a very big company, they've been a third party company ever since they've been around. They've been a multi-platform company with games like Skyrim, Fallout, Wolfenstein, Doom. All of their properties seem to end up on every system. So many people were wondering, well, how is this going to impact the future? To me, it wouldn't really make much sense for Microsoft to purchase Bethesda for $7.5 billion and then not use it to bolster their first-party studios to get exclusive games on the platform. And if you know anything about me, you would know that I love exclusive games. I think exclusive games for various systems are great. It's a great way Way to get people to want to buy your hardware it's what drives the video game industry exclusives are not anti-consumer people I, I really can't stand when people said that well today Phil Spencer has now put out a statement about the acquisition now supposedly there is an event happening on March 11th where Microsoft will detail more about what they're going to be doing with Bethesda and of course the Bethesda IPs but Phil Spencer put out a press release available over on Xbox's official website today that was actually very interesting to me and he said the following things this is the next step in building an industry-leading first-party studios team, a commitment we have to the Xbox community. With the addition of Bethesda Creative Teams, gamers should know that Xbox consoles, PC, and Game Pass will be the best place to experience new Bethesda games, including some new titles in the future that will be exclusive to Xbox and PC players. So of course there are some games that are still getting DLC from Bethesda, such as Doom Eternal, which is a multi-platform game. A game like Deathloop is of course a PlayStation 5 exclusive, at least for now. I, I don't really care about Deathloop. Like I, I don't understand why people are getting hyped about it, but if you like it, you know, that's cool for you. But the future of Bethesda is going to be very interesting because Phil Spencer says it'll be the best place to experience new Bethesda games, more than likely meaning that it will utilize the power of the Xbox Series X and of course things like Game Pass, where you'll be able to get the game on day one if you are a game pass member without actually having to purchase the game which i think is a big thing but including some new titles in the future that will be exclusive to xbox and pc players that doesn't really close the door on this being a first party studio that's not going to be working on other games for other platforms because you're pretty much saying that only some of the games will be exclusive to xbox and pc so will we see other games come out on other systems from bethesda maybe there'll be some timed exclusives that will be available on the Xbox Series X first and then down the road we'll see things but I do think it's very interesting that they're leaving that door open and when you look at how Microsoft has been doing business lately they're not afraid to put their games on other platforms if the other companies are willing to work with them like we've seen with of course games like Ori on the Nintendo Switch and even Cuphead which came out on the Nintendo Switch and the PS4 so it's going to be very interesting to see what ends up happening with this I'm really looking forward to this March 11th event I feel like we're gonna learn some new stuff obviously Bethesda is isn't a company that churns out games really regularly like they do have a bunch of subsidiary companies that are allowing them to do different things but realistically your big games like your fallouts your skyrims those only come around once in a while so it's going to be very interesting to see what ends up happening with this acquisition but what do you think is going to be the final piece of this puzzle is microsoft going to put bethesda games on other platforms or are they going to keep them exclusive to the xbox series of consoles and of course pc let me know what you think about all this in the comment section down below and like i said we'll be talking more about this on march 11th and finally 
You heard about this thing called the Nintendo, Nintendo Switch Pro? Obviously, there has been a lot of talk about this system lately, ever since Bloomberg put out their report last week about a 7-inch Nintendo Switch revision coming in 2021 that's going into production in the month of June. It'll allow for 4K capabilities when it's put in dock mode. A lot of people have been talking about this. It's been a very hot topic. Maybe some people have been talking about it a little too much, but obviously, when you get a report like that, you start getting other people coming out of the woodwork with information about this thing as well. And I think it's cool, you know, talking about things and speculating about things, whether you're on YouTube or any sort of social media platform is a great thing, as long as you're not really presenting it necessarily as 100% concrete fact. If it's what you feel and what you believe, that's a good thing in my opinion. Everything I've said about this Nintendo Switch revision is something that I definitely feel. I definitely think that this system will have DLSS capabilities in it to allow for these 4K games. And I think it's going to be a very cool system when it comes out, because I do feel that it is going to come out. But unfortunately, sometimes you get some misinformation sprinkled in there and then people start to run wild with it. And something that I've been seeing, a report that's been coming up today, just really has me scratching my head. And I, I don't understand why people are starting to run with this story. It's been gaining a lot of steam on social media. So I kind of worded my story to go alongside of what this report is saying, but I did that to sort of, you know, curve the misinformation because I don't think any of this makes sense in any way, shape or form. So this report is coming to us from GameReactor.eu, which is a very popular website. You know, they've done a lot of good things before in the past. I've looked at their website before, decent website, you know, whatever. But they had a report come out a couple days ago that is now starting to pick up steam about this Nintendo Switch Pro that I definitely have some questions about the validity of it. So let's just get right into the report. What is said in this report and why I don't really believe it. So they go on to say the following, while checking the veracity of the rumors, a person within knowledge in the matter told Game Reactor that Nvidia is halting the production of the system on a chip powering the Nintendo Switch this year. Both the regular and smaller and cheaper Nintendo Switch Lite feature the latest version of the Nvidia Tegra X1 Marico. The source told Game Reactor that Nvidia plans to stop producing the processor in 2021, but did not elaborate further on what comes next or what may happen with the current versions of the hardware. Now, to me, this makes absolutely no sense because according to this report, essentially what this Nintendo Switch revision would be doing is completely replacing the Nintendo Switch and the Nintendo Switch Lite that is currently available on the marketplace. If Nvidia is indeed ending the production of the Tegra X1 chip in 2021, that would mean, well, they're not gonna be making more chips for the Nintendo Switch system that is currently available, meaning that the system would be essentially phased out. Sure, you might get a couple months into 2022 with whatever chips are available on the marketplace, but this this just makes absolutely no sense to me because when you look at the Nintendo Switch and even what President Furukara has said about the Nintendo Switch in the past before, he envisions the Nintendo Switch family of systems as a, a family. You know, you can't have just one member of a family. I mean, I guess I guess technically you could, but when you're talking about a family of systems, you're talking about a multitude of systems. Right now, we of course have the standard Nintendo Switch that is on the marketplace and the Nintendo Switch Lite. I don't understand why a Nintendo Switch revision would necessarily supersede these and get rid of the current models that are currently available in the marketplace because it doesn't make sense. If you wanna phase out the current Nintendo Switch or just produce it less in order to have the Nintendo Switch revision, Nintendo Switch Pro, whatever the hell you wanna call it, that's sort of one thing, that's something I can understand, but to completely abandon the Nintendo Switch Lite, I think is a terrible, terrible move. The Nintendo Switch Lite is selling pretty well. It's available at $200 right now. And of course, as time goes on, things like the chips used in this system will of course come down in price, meaning that Nintendo has more leverage with the Nintendo Switch Lite in order to make the system cheaper. If this system dropped down to like $150, this thing would be flying off of store shelves because at the end of the day, it still plays all of your Nintendo Switch games. Now, of course, there is that information from Nate Drake saying that there's going to be, of course, exclusive games to this Nintendo Switch revision, something that could be very interesting, but it just, it, you know, it's weird to me because I obviously like talking about rumors. I obviously like speculating on things like this and sometimes you know i see things that just don't make sense to me and i just sort of let it pass by but when something starts to gain a lot of steam it, it kind of concerns me because i feel like people get this misinformation out there and then everyone's talking about it and it's kind of like no that that really doesn't make sense so i don't see why nintendo would do this because the nintendo switch as it is on the marketplace right now has sold over 80 million in four years it's one of the hottest selling systems of all time it's outpacing the ps4 it's outpacing the nintendo wii 
huge successes in the marketplace. It might even do some PS2 style numbers at the end of the day. And by elongating the Switch's life cycle by introducing a revision to what's currently available on the marketplace is what's going to help this. Introducing brand new hardware that looks like a successor that phases out what you have currently on the marketplace, to me, that just starts a new generation. So really at the end of the day, whenever somebody talks about the Nintendo Switch revision, it's just what they feel about the subject. It's just what they've seen online and what people are talking about. To take things like this as fact can be very dangerous because you sort of set yourself up for a potential failure at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, I don't care what uh, you know other people make videos about. If they want to talk about this, if they want to believe this rumor, that's cool. But for me, I'm only speaking to you guys. This is just my opinion on the subject at the end of the day. So I wanted to share my opinion on this and why I feel like it just doesn't make any sort of sense to me. But maybe it makes sense to you. Maybe you're sort of an outside thinker, you know, a little outside the box. That's cool, man. That's cool. Let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. All right. So that is going to do it for today's video. Just a couple topics that I wanted to go over with you guys and talk about some of this interesting information. So let me know what you think of everything in the comments section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel as well. I planned on playing Apex Legends today on the Switch. It's March 9th. The game still hasn't come out yet. I don't know why it's a digital game just press the button allow the game to come online i'd like to play it I'd like to see how it runs I'd like to see how it looks I'd like to make a video on it and as always i'll catch you guys on the next one later